remember when we moved for the first time to Milan, the city seemed full of energy and the rich, stimulating scene of architecture and design, the high variety of international events, as MiArc, Design Week, Expo, Biennale and many others, it was a source of motivation for ourselves to work more and wanted to become part of it. From Italy's territory, culture and history, I learned a lot about reutilization and reinvention and about its practical applications with the architecture. From living in Italy, I learned and had a first-hand experience of what it is to be an architect within a context of extreme rhetoric. I suffered a lot from its downsides, but learned about its advantages and how to use them in other places. In Italy, I got in touch with a very specific way to see the project because there is a very strong intention towards the concept. This idea that can be cultural, philosophical, let's say, has been with me. It's something that also made me kind of change a lot my perspective towards what architecture is and how it should serve and how it should be created and how it should be conceived. During my time studying in Milan, uh, I met a lot of people from different countries and recognized how important it was to find ways to relate to them culturally and socially. I think the social life and the sort of arts culture is very, very strong in that city. The exhibitions and public spaces seem to be quite imperative to you know, engaging on a social level the way the Italians do, where they go out to the piazza and just smoke a joint or you know, drink a wine and just sort of sit around because they don't have a lot of their own private outdoor space where they live. Mixing architecture and engineering was very interesting because normally there isn't a lot of changes between these two divisions of the construction branch. The way to work with uh, existing buildings in important patrimonial sites, we had special courses about this with very good teachers and I think these courses are not very common outside Italy. The cultural context is really fantastic for all students in Italy because you have the possibility to see so many iconic buildings in the field of architecture. Italy is a condenser of architectural knowledge and prototypes, both from the classic and the contemporary production. I try to travel and study as much as possible historic masterpieces of Italian architecture, uh, trying to understand what makes them outstanding and timeless, composition, density and urbanity. They are all present in the ancient ruins of Pompeii or in the historic center of Rome, in the streets of Florence, in Piazza del Campo in Siena, but also in the modern buildings of Tehran in Como or the, the structures of Pierluigi Nervi, writings and manifestos from the wider philosophical and political uh, discourse of Italian intellectuals such as Paolo Virno or Tony Negri. They have been decisive in my formation as an architect. Scale is an important concept you can simply learn by visiting Italian cities. Debate is very alive. You have to fight for your opinion and people are not afraid to do so. My specific experience of studying in Milan, it might have inspired me to look for different formats to communicate my ideas. Films, articles, libricini, important aspect was the role of references, riferimenti, which I was very critical when I was a student and which became important to my practice. I learned that crossing different methodologies can provide expanded points of criticality, which can be fruitful in unexpected ways. Universities provide a springboard for speculation, but what matters, what you actually do with what you learn. Trying to focus always in the forces that kind of modify what architecture is. There are a lot of ideas behind each project that are not related with shape or with the location or with the context in general, but are rather uh, philosophical, very conceptual. And those forces are more interesting than the building itself because they shape it in a way in which I couldn't have imagined before. If you're working on things you really believe in, then you will grow much faster professionally. Luckily, architecture has to offer a very wide range of different activities which complement each other in a very positive ways. As for example, research, educational work, that might be an opportunity of a new stimulus. I think one point I really appreciate still today is the international atmosphere during my studies at Politecnico in Milan and the exchanges with other students from different countries of the rest of the world.
world. This helped me to get along more easily in the international offices I have worked after my studies. More specifically, I think that the ability Italians share to work in historical contexts was quite inspiring and helps me still today when working on historical sites. Italian architecture and the way to teach it is very orientated towards conceptualizing ideas, which was very helpful for the theoretical project we developed recently. After Italy, I started to intellectualize my practice a bit more. The search for alternative formats to display work in progress. Regarding concepts, well, I explored as a student the relationship with a landscape and between building and public space, and that was something I continued to do. In a way, we became more critical and and prolific. We searched for opportunities and projects in which we could think about the fundamental qualities of architecture and urban design. We think that architecture should be based on the fundamentals and facilitate the vibrancy of the city and create opportunities for encounters and, uh, and activities. As a practice, Atelier Cartel has been very focused on finding similar ways of engaging um, different audiences from different backgrounds. I came to live and work in Russia, a uh, context where development's fast momentum leaves very little space for speculation, especially within architecture and design. It's like the polar opposite of Italy. The moment you realize ab about this sharp contrast, you understand it may be a perfect chance or a perfect opportunity to be disruptive. So in Russia, architectural practice is like a wheel that spins very fast. The idea is that maybe it could be slowed down before it breaks apart, make it better, make it go further. I would say three things. First, be persistent. I think persistence and tenacity are fundamental when you open your practice in architecture. Architecture is kind of a marathon, it does take time, it's very often frustrating, and therefore you need to be very patient and to stay true to your ideas. I'm sure it does pay off in the long term, well, at least I hope so. Second, take part to architectural competition are really the best way to start for a young office because it's the only process really promoting ideas rather than experience. Unfortunately, open competitions are rare and restricted competitions are hardly reachable when you lack of experience. Um, three, don't work alone. Finally, I think it's important for young architects to be able to work in association. When you associate the freshness of a young office with the experience of a bigger one, you have better chances to be shortlisted for restricted competitions. It's a kind of win-win process. We have the chance to make a difference. And working close to your context, or a context you know well, engaging with topics you are interested in and you care about, is the best way to achieve good results. Relevant is doing something valuable and building up a meaningful body of work which you believe in. Be proactive, look for the field you want to operate in and be brave. Don't forget your values. One can always find a very personal way and I think this, uh, this enormous production of architecture lately is not necessarily something negative. I just see it as a perfect, let's say, source where to take inspiration from. We just need to be able to choose very well which things we consider important and ideas, images, projects, lectures, reinforce the path that we are really planning to follow. Our generation was both uh, unfortunate and lucky uh, to be raised uh, before the financial crisis and educated while it was uh, unfolding. We have uh, seen an excessive and, uh, and over-comfortable world, uh, Western world collapsing while new priorities uh, appeared. Um, on the one hand, it could be enough therefore to, to just pose the right questions and uh, critique and absorb the, the mistakes of the previous generations, uh, move out of our comfort zone and adapt uh, a new radical approach to architecture and, uh, and the new emerging realities. Uh, on the other hand, though, we should remain optimists and uh, work hard to bring architecture in the foreground uh, again, widen its repertoire and, uh, and make it useful and accessible to the multitude. Uh, as uh, Italian philosopher Ant uh, Tony Negri would say, architecture should rather resist the speculative temptations of neoliberalism 
and serve the commons and, uh, and the productive subjects of the metropolis. And uh, such a new perspective couldn't but start from Italy, as it has often happened throughout history. A lot more than just design buildings as architects, they designed household objects, they designed, you know, they did theatre and set designs, they designed furniture, they did paintings. Um, they had different ways of elevating their ideals into society and that seems to be um, a pathway that we think is important for young architects because um, buildings take a long time to construct and um, we're living in a very fast paced time when uh, we need to do other things in order to have a voice within society creating an outlet both creatively but also for networking opportunities and for future architectural projects. Um, they're kind of a, a, an opportunity to uh, explore sometimes very intuitively which is quite unusual in the context of an architectural practice. It may sound generic but failure, share and learn about failure. I refer to context-specific architecture and design. Finished project pictures may look nice on social media, but sharing what we were not able to achieve or attain not only makes us happier in the longer term, but sharing it, something especially easy in the times in which we live in, can help others not repeat our mistakes and break invisible walls that shouldn't even exist in the information era.